Welcome back, guys. We are in Capital Budgeting. For this lecture, we are going to talk about a comprehensive case that would involve the calculation of the net present value and the internal rate of return. Let us proceed immediately to the case. The cheese company is considering a project with a fixed asset cost of 60,000 pesos. Net working capital needed for this project amounts to 10,000 pesos. It is expected that the project will operate for three years, in which before tax cash flows of 30,000 will be generated annually. At the end of the three years, the estimated salvage value of the fixed asset is 5,000. However, for tax purposes, this is not considered in the depreciation calculation. To be used is the straight line method, good for three years. Chase is subject to an income tax rate of 30%. The weighted average cost of capital, WAC, is 10%. Let us arrive at the net present value. We're going to start by arriving at the cash flows from the beginning to the end of the life of the project. So we will start with year zero the net investment calculation. Again, the net investment is everything that would happen in this period, assuming the project will be taken. So the net outflow of cash for this day, we have capitalizable amount, 60,000. This is the fixed asset cost. We can recognize it as property, plant, and equipment. In addition to the outflow for the capitalizable amount, we're also going to have an increase in net working capital, 10,000 pesos. This has been fully discussed in our net investment calculation lecture. Again, this is the additional outflow that we need to make in order to kickstart the business. Say, if we're operating a new branch, we would need inventory. Aside from the amounts that we pay for machines, we are also going to pay for additional inventory. That is the increase in net working capital. This is not a replacement of an asset, so no sales of all the equipment, and there are no other things that are expected to happen in year zero, that's now. So we would have a net investment of 70,000 pesos. Again, net investment is 70,000 pesos, the amount to be paid at the beginning. Let's now proceed to the annual after-tax cash flows. In year one, we are expecting a 30,000 before-tax cash flow. We may now calculate the after-tax equivalent. 30,000 pesos times 1 minus the tax rate of 30%. This is the before tax cash flows times 1 minus tax rate. Then remember to add the depreciation tax shield. So if the capitalizable amount is 60,000 pesos divided by 3 years, straight line depreciation, we would have a 20,000 peso annual depreciation. Times 30%, we would have the depreciation tax shield. So our after tax cash flow is 21,000 pesos. This is the tax before tax cash flow. And the depreciation tax shield of 6,000 pesos for a sum of 27,000 pesos. This after tax cash flow will be generated in year one, year two, and year three. Hence, this is an annual amount. Now, we are going to the end of the project's life. Year 3 is the last year of operations. What other things can happen at the last year of operations? These are the following things that can happen. The fixed asset that we possess, we may now sell it if we're not going to use it. So allegedly, it is going to have a salvage value of 5,000 pesos. But remember that we have depreciated the full 
60,000 capitalizable amount. And hence, for tax purposes, we are going to have a zero tax base. So if we can sell this for 5,000 pesos, as far as the tax authorities are concerned, this has a zero value, the company would be able to declare a gain. Having a gain would add taxes. So we're going to consider the tax impact of such. 5,000 pesos times 1 minus 30%, we have 3,500 pesos. The after-tax salvage value of the fixed asset sales. Lastly, remember that we were required to invest additional working capital of 10,000 pesos at the beginning of the year. If we're going to stop operations by the end of year three, whatever we invested, say in inventory, we have to liquidate it. That is, we're going to make one last sale and therefore we can now recover the net working capital amount. So we would be able to release or recover the 10,000 pesos networking capital. These are the cash flows relevant in our analysis. Then lastly, we're going to talk about the discount rate. Accordingly, the cost of capital is 10%. Since the cost of capital is 10%, we would say that the minimum rate of return in order for a project to be considered profitable would be 10%. Hence, this is the discount rate to be used. Also, we call this the hurdle rate. Hurdle rate is 10%. Okay. These are the relevant cash flows and data for our analysis. We may now proceed with the discounting. There are two types of present value factors that would be relevant for our analysis. That would be the 10% lump sum after three years for items that are going to happen once three years from now. And the present value factor for an annuity of three years, this would be relevant for the recurring cash flows every year for the next three years. So for 10%, we would have the following discount rates for the lump sum PV factor after 3 years, 0.7513. For the present value of an annuity, 3 years, 2.4869. We are going to multiply the 27,000 recurring cash flows by the annuity factor, which is again, 2.4869. But for the salvage value of the fixed asset and the recovery of working capital, which would happen only once, that's after three years, we are going to multiply this by the lump sum PV factor, 0 0.7513. After doing the relevant calculations, we're going to have the following. That would give you a value of 77,288, the value of this project. Remember that the net investment was 70,000. 77,288 minus 70,000, we have a net present value of 7,288. Again, the net present value of this project is 7,288. So this is how we arrive at the net present value. We simply look at the cash flows that are expected to happen from the beginning until the end, then affect the time value of money through the PV calculation. We would arrive at the net present value. Now, let us proceed to the internal rate of return. We are going to use the same case. Again, this is the given. We already had an analysis of the cash flows to review.
So let us now calculate the internal rate of return. As I have discussed in the previous video, we would not be able to arrive at it directly. What we can do is to look for the discount rate. To look for the discount rate that would give us a zero net present value. That is our objective. We have no choice but to use trial and error. But if this is being asked in a multiple choice question, it would be easier for you. You just have to test all choices. For this case, let us have the following given. What could be the internal rate of return? Is it 14.42%? 15.42%? 16.42%? Or 17.42%? Again, what we need to do is to simply look for the discount rate that would give us a zero net present value. To answer the question, it's 15.42%. At the discount rate of 15.42%, we would have the following PV factors. For PV of lump sum, 3 years, 0 0.6504. For PV of annuity, 3 years, we have 2.2674. That would give us the following. Note that the value is 70000 which is equivalent to the cost of the net investment, which is also 70000 You have a zero net present value. As a result, since we are able to arrive at the discount rate that would give us a zero net present value through trial and error, we can conclude that the IRR is 15.42%. Is this a good project? Remember, when evaluating independent projects, we're going to see if the net present value is greater than zero, the internal rate of return is greater than the hurdle rate. In this case, we can say that this is a desirable project. In the next video, we are going to talk about cases where the projects are not independent from one another. They are called mutually exclusive projects. In a mutually exclusive project, accepting one project would mean you have to reject the other. So if both projects are profitable, you have to forego one of them still. In addition to that, we're also going to talk about independent projects. However, we have some constraints or limitation in the funds available for investment. Please stay tuned. Comment below for future topics. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to stay updated for new videos. Like, share, and subscribe.